All right, good stuff. We are all so proud to be Kenyan, aren't we? Absolutely. One man who can tell you he loves this country a lot is the author of Love Africa, a book about forgiveness, about torturous long distance relationships, about love, about moving back and forth, passion, all of it. He is here and he speaks a little bit of Swahili. Yes, he does. Everybody, please welcome Jeffrey Gettleman to the show. Hey, hey, hey. How are you? I'm great. Habari yako? Niko poa. Uko poa kabisa? Kabisa. Imagine. You can't. Nimeshanga. Nimeshanga yangu yote. Oh my god. Si wa jenga. Si wa ni kweli. Hata ni kweli by the way. Umesema ukweli. Eh, Aketi, please welcome. Asante. Do you know, can I tell you something? Please. When you sent me we were corresponding on WhatsApp about this interview and when you sent me a WhatsApp message uh, saying sasa dada I was like, now this guy <laughs> This guy was trying to speak Swahili. And now I find out you speak flu and Swahili. Wonderful. Clap for him, guys. He's so Thank awesome. You. That's okay. <laughs> All right. So, Jeffrey, your story yes. is a very interesting one, and your book is even more interesting. Thank you. Congratulations on, first of all, your big award, uh, the Pulitzer Prize. But Love Africa is a very amazing book. And it's, it's gone up there. It's a New York bestseller. Yeah. Amazing. That is a huge feat. Tell me a little bit, first of all, before we talk about the book, about yourself and how you got to love this wonderful continent and country. How much time do you have? Go for <laughs> it. Go for it. We're open. Um, I came to Kenya for the first time in 1990 when I was 18, a student. And I fell in love with the place. Yeah. And I've actually met many other people who've had similar experiences. Um, where they come, they know very little about this part of the world. I grew up in a, a suburb of Chicago, had very little interaction or information about East Africa. But I found myself um, with an opportunity to go on a trip through East Africa as a student. And I've been trying to sort of figure out like what was it that summer that really made me fall in love with this part of the world and want to make it part of my life. Yeah. And it's, it's hard to put my finger on it completely, but part of it is, a big part of it was the, the spirit and people's openness yeah. and people's open heartedness. And it's really true. I mean, you guys take it for granted. This is your, this is your world. So maybe you can't really picture another way of being. Yeah. But people just, they made time for us. They, they were, were open to us as outsiders. Um, people showed joy, curiosity, empathy a lot more than they, you know, here than they do back home where right. I'm from. Yeah. And so that, that, and, and I spent, so this summer we drove from Nairobi to um, southern Malawi through rural Tanzania, rural Malawi. Um, and these were really poor areas, you know, a, a level of poverty that I had not experienced in the United States. Mm -hmm. But the, 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 the kind of the warmth that I felt from people and, and it was really amazing and that's what I took away. I thought if people in this part of the in this part of the world can have so little yet yeah. be so open um, and be welcoming to us as outsiders, then you know, this is a, a beautiful part of the world I want to spend more time in. Absolutely. There is, of course, a, a, a terrible he, a stereotype, I think, globally about the continent. And, and yes, there, there is poverty and, and there's a, a lot uh, that has happened based on politics, war, all of that kind of thing. And you've experienced that. But there's also so much positive and beautiful things that happen uh, across this continent. And, and a lot of it is not usually mentioned within the mainstream media. But you decided that your book was going to focus on the beautiful as well. Um, tell me about this, I guess, this horrible stereotype and, and why. No, I think you're really right. A, a big part of it is news tends to focus on the negative, on the dramatic, on the disastrous. Whether it's news in Chicago or news in New York or news in Nairobi, Kenya. You pick up the paper and you think the world is going to pieces, yeah. right? As you read about teachers that molest students and relatives that kill each other over money and political parties arguing about this and that, that's what news is. Um, and so a journalist from, from the Western world who comes to Africa finds himself covering many of these conflicts. That's a big part of our job is to go to Somalia, is to go to Darfur, is to go to Eastern Congo, um, and write about some pretty b bad things happening. Um, and people in these areas often don't have a voice. 
they, it's, it's difficult for them to challenge their leaders. A lot of these places do not have free media. I mean, you in Kenya, you're, you're, it's, it's a totally different landscape yeah. here than a lot of places I work. Yeah. Like, for instance, South Sudan, uh, or Somalia, or Eritrea, or Sudan. These are places that it's very difficult to write anything negative, or, or Ethiopia, yeah. about the government. Yeah. Where you, it, that could put you in jail or Absolutely. get you killed. Absolutely. So, so I feel some responsibility if I hear about a bad situation in some of these places to write about it with the hope that maybe there will be some change. Yeah. Maybe people will begin to care. In your book, there's a lot of um, love, there's uh, forgiveness, there's <laughs> Torture, you know, there's your own experiences. Talk to us a little bit, especially about, we love love on this show, about the love and long distance and how you did it. Well, okay, so my book is about two loves. Mm -hmm. It's about my love for this part of the world, which developed when I was very young. And it's also about my love for my wife, yes. who I met when I was very young, which is a beautiful thing to grow up with somebody and stay together. But it's also not easy, yeah. because when you're 17 or 18 years old, you're, 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 you're torn by a lot of different impulses. Part of you wants to prove yourself. Part of you wants to make it you know, successfully in a career. Part of you wants to have fun. You know? And at the same time, you, you, you know when you're in love. And so, um, so my book tracks my struggles with this. The fact that Kenyans are very unique um, from other African countries in terms of our culture and also small little things that we do. Um, we're also quite critical of ourselves. Um, looking at your own experience, because you've been across the region and, and you've lived and worked with many, many of the East Africans, Eastern Africans, T talk to us about the Kenyan experience, how different it is, I guess, from Uganda or Tanzania. No, so that's, so that's, that's another really good question. Um, Kenya is, is so far ahead of, of just about the entire continent yeah. in so many ways. Thank you. Clap for ourselves. Yeah, and I'm, <laughs> And I'm not, I'm not saying Kenya doesn't have its problems. Yeah. Um, and that, you know, every place, every society has its fault lines, um, its weak spots. Yeah. But there's an openness here. There's a sense of hustle here. There's people that, um, you know, people work really hard in this country. Yeah. Like I've never, see, I just remember, and I write about this in the book of driving, often I would fly to Somalia. Yeah. And to take these flights to Mogadishu, we would have to leave at like four in the morning. The like takeoff time was like at six or seven a.m. Mm -hmm. You got to be there two hours early and check in and all that. And so I would be driving down, you know, Huru Highway uh, from my house, and you would see people walking up the sides of the road, walking to work. Thousands of Kenyans every day at dawn. People without enough money for a matatu yeah. that were like committed to working hard, um, and. You just don't, you don't see that in a lot of other places. And part of that is because there's hope here. Yeah. So you wouldn't do that if you thought that was totally futile. If you thought, you know what, I'm not going to get ahead. My kids are going to have a crappy life. I'm going to be mistreated. You wouldn't be motivated. Yeah. But if you're hopeful, if you think, you know what, if I work hard, I can give my kids a better life than I had. Yeah. Or I can get some things that I've always wanted. Mm -hmm. if you, that, that drives this, this society. Absolutely. And, and, and there's so many... That just permeates across, I mean, just, just the services here, yeah. um, you see it. So I go, to, I go to South Sudan, or I go to Uganda, or I go to Rwanda. Kenyans are running the businesses. Mm -hmm. Kenyans are running the hotels. Kenyans are running the tourist operations. Kenyans are so much more competent than a lot of these other pe people from these other countries because this place has been developed longer. Yeah. And there's a highly educated population, and there's, and there's a sense of freedom. Absolutely. Where you can speak out, and you can you can challenge your, 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 your leaders. Yeah. And it hasn't always been like that. It was hard Definitely. in the 80s, yes. you know, mm -hmm. no doubt. Um, but I think, I think Kenya's got like a very, very bright future. And I don't just, I'm not just saying that here. Yes. Um, I but, just say but, that in but, your but, book. But, yeah. but, <laughs> but, but, but to be fair, I mean, we all know about the Tabu Ya, ya Ukabila. Mm. You know, these countries were created by, by colonizers you know, 150, 200 years ago, carved out of, you know, a blank space yes. on the African map. And one day you're told you're Tanzanian and the guy across the field is a Kenyan. And you should all of a sudden identify as a Tanzanian and you should identify as a Kenyan. And people are like, well, wait, we're the same tribe, we're the same ethnic group, we have the same language. Why all of a sudden do we have a different, you know, allegiance? So I think there's a reason why Kenyans still hold on to 
these these other bases of identity. Yeah. Because it's asking a lot to take a group of people and say, all of a sudden, you should all think of yourselves as part of this new nation. Mm -hmm. it, this country is, you know, is it, it, less than 75 years old. It Absolutely. takes it takes time. Yeah. And in the United States, it's like I cover civil wars across Africa. The United States had one of the bloodiest civil wars, you know, in recent history, yeah. where hundreds Absolutely. of thousands of people were killed in a really ugly, brutal civil war that was, you know, 70 years after its independence. Mm -hmm. So countries, countries take a while to solidify, and I think that's what we see. Absolutely. Okay. Looking at your book, of course, um, and, and from the moment that you wrote it, I always find this so interesting. I literally ask every author this question from the idea into penning it, into manuscript, into looking for it to get published. Of course, your background is with the New York Times, uh, so you might be able to navigate that a lot easier. But talk to us a little bit about that. Um, so have you, have you, have you written a book? No, I haven't. I, okay. I haven't written a book. No, not yet. It, it's hard. Yeah. I know, I've tried actually, and I, I gave up on like chapter three. It, it's hard. It, you know, it's, um, it's a different skill than journalism. Yeah. Journalism, you have to be fast. Um, you have to be pretty superficial. You know, you only can co convey so much information in, a, in an article or a mm. quick news broadcast. Um, a book has to, has to say something. You have to really open up and, and try to be as deep and profound and, and find something of meaning. And authentic. And, and authentic yeah. and honest. Yeah. Um, and so that's, it took me like five years. Okay. And it was a process, like I can write fast, like I do that for a living. You know, I sit down, there's some news, I cover it, I write notes in my notebook, I go back to my computer, I can write a sentence fast, I can write a thousand words, you know, in an hour, yeah. or hour and a half, okay. like pretty fast. Um, I'm actually not a very good, I, I never learned how to type properly, okay. which would have been nice if I, because then You'd I... would be faster. I would be faster, <laughs> I would be faster. But, right. but I can still sort of do what I need to do. Okay. But writing a book is different because um, it, has to have a, it has to have a message. It has to have a story. So like my story is about a young guy, kind of clueless, dumb, teenage American coming to East Africa, falling in love with it, and trying to make it part of his life. Yeah. And then writing a lot of the ups and downs. Um, but of course, looking at your book and, and who it's written for, I know it's a, it's a book for the world, um, but I know that there are beautiful messages in there as well. Um, looking at how you would like it to be received as we wind up this interview, tell us about that. How do you want people to take this book? So I want people to read the book as a personal story as an adventure story, as a love story. Um, I, I know a bit about this region as a journalist. I've covered it for 11 years. Yeah. I'm actually the, the um, there's never been a New York Times correspondent that's been in Kenya as long as I have. Yes, true. Most people stay like three to four years. I've been here 11. Um, Amazing, so, it's, a big, it's a good thing. We love it when people so, visit. So, so I want people to, to, to see this book as as, as a personal story about falling in love with a place yeah. and, and following your dreams. Yeah, absolutely. And, and I think the book speaks volumes on that. So guys, the book is available. Is it available in stores in Kenya or is it just it online? Is. It just, no, it just got here. It's at Westland Sundries. It's at Textbook Center. Okay. It's at Prestige Books in town. Fantastic. How much is it? Um, it's like around 2,500, okay, 2,000 shillings. Okay, fantastic. I believe David wants to talk to you. He wants to teach you Luya. Okay. Can you Murembe. speak? Mure he knows. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky David. Murembe and Dover. I, I, I give up on you, yeah? Can we all no, meet no, in no. the middle? Let's all meet in the Ooh. middle here. All these language experts, okay? Uh, Thank you, Jeffrey. Thank you. you are awesome. My Let's pleasure. meet over here. All right. He, he stayed back because he wanted to teach you and you already know. Sawa. Hey, Jeff. Yes, and Dover Yango. Tuambi ukweli. Are you not in Joroge? Tumalizane hapa saizi. Hey, hey, I'm so much grateful una, unajua Kiswahili. Mm. It is. Unajua ngeta. Hapana. Ujawai pigwa nyongo leo. Mudhurwa. Mumwega. You also speak a bit of Kiku. You, do you no, speak no, no, no. What, what I tried to do, I yeah. do speak Swahili. I okay. tried to be able to say hello in the and big languages. In the big languages. Yeah. The yeah. big ones. Yeah, the big ones. We'll teach you all 42. Yeah, you stick that's, out with that's, 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 Sina Akili Mingi, Sana Kamehivo. This guy's not going to stop shaking mm. your hand. Ike Kidoga. Sasa. Yes. Nikitoka hapa tukitie mahali. Unataka kula kitu. 
twende tupige mutura na subu. <laughs> Is that your Mzungu accent? <laughs> horrible, right? All right, but guys, give it up for these two amazing gentlemen. All right. <laughs> Log on to our social media platforms. Love Africa is an amazing book, all right? It is a bestseller. New York bestseller. It's not, not a small feat. I, I, I really can't wait to read it, all right? So log on to our social media platforms. We'll give you all the information on how to get yourself a copy of the book and spread the love, all right? Spread the love. And let's remember how wonderful this continent is, how wonderful this country is. And especially this year, David, before we go, yeah. David is, is preaching peace this election year. And yes. I, I think it would be important that you tell us a little bit about that campaign. Yeah, we are preaching peace. Mm -hmm. There's a <coughs> non-governmental organization we are pairing up. Okay. It's called Huduma Sasa, and uh, it's promoting peace. Uh, this election, uh, let's just keep calm. And uh, it's going to be awesome. We are m doing some tours around the country okay. within. So soon we are coming to your area. But then before that, find me on Instagram. This is the, this is the best line for artists. Find me on Instagram at David Babu. <laughs> Twitter <laughs> at I am David Babu. Uh, Facebook. David Babu Comedian. Don't forget what the, to add the word comedian. Don't worry. We're going to put all that on yes. the screen for you. So you don't even have to do all that work. Yeah, but they have to <laughs> see me again. Comedy Arena, we are coming soon. Fantastic. Yeah, we're on a break, so I'll update you guys. And Jeffrey, yes. where can we find you? You can find me um, on New York Times or, yeah. or JeffreyGettleman.com. Okay, there you go. Je JeffreyGettleman.com. Yep. All yep. right, thank kind you so much. My pleasure. No, it's not. Yep. Not at all. Thank you, David. I know we all also find you in Kakamega, you yeah, know, yeah. yes. Utampeleka yeah. Ocha, akule mm. Ingoho. Tuanda tupige Ingoho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. In uh, Kunyua <laughs> Hiyo, Busa. Uh, Busa. Yeah, Busa. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Uyo, Busa. I can't. I think this is... This, it's called Katuitui. Tutanyoroja Katuitui very fast. This is a match made in heaven. All right, everybody, thank you for joining us. Let's love this country and let's be peaceful. Bye, everyone. Have a good one. Thank you.